Here's a breather show about how I optimize testosterone naturally. And yes, I am full natty as I detailed on a previous breather show, but I am pleased to share with you my excellent recent results of my male hormone panels, which I run extremely frequently because really uh, reproductive fitness is a great proxy for overall health, fitness, energy, vitality, performance, and recovery. So if you're looking on the video presentation here, I'm showing you my most recent readings for serum testosterone, that's total testosterone of 813, and then free testosterone of 108. And those are both great bumps from my historical pattern of recent months where, for example, my serum testosterone, 625, 584, 792, 665, and then most recently, 813. Uh, one uh, thing I have to be thankful for is my relationship with Merrick Health. So please visit the link, Merrick, M-A-R-E-K, Health dot com slash Brad, and you can see the custom testing protocol and the one-on-one -on -one consultation services that they offer to help you optimize, not just avoid disease risk like you get when you perform a routine blood test and go see your physician for annual checkup, also super important, and of course I do that too, but this is fine-tuning and tweaking and trying out different supplements and different dietary revisions that have helped me uh, get that bump along with numerous ways that I live my daily life that help optimize testosterone and optimize health. So this might even be a two-part show because I want to get uh, proper coverage for each of these important ones. And I think we really should start with sleep. And I sleep my ass off. So number one is sleep your ass off. There's absolutely no excuse to skimp on sleep at all. And I kind of define that as allowing yourself or creating a lifestyle such that you awaken naturally uh, without too much difficulty, without a blaring alarm, hopefully near sunrise, because that's really important for circadian rhythm. That's when you get the natural hormone optimization and circadian rhythm alignment from exposing yourself to direct light. And it's also super important to get outside and expose your eyes to direct light in the morning. I'm not talking about sunny sunlight, but just the natural light, even if it's a cloudy overcast day. And remember that looking outside through a window will filter out some of those important rays that have a tremendous impact on your circadian rhythm. So even if it's cold, if it's below zero, whatever you gotta do, uh, figure out a way to get a few minutes of direct light in the morning. And if you're in a more temperate climate, uh, spend some time outdoors as soon as possible near sunrise every morning. And that is the way that you set yourself up for a good night's sleep later that evening because you are getting that natural spike in the mood elevating hormones such as serotonin and cortisol prompted by sunlight and you get a concurrent melatonin release in the evening if you have done a lot of good work with circadian alignment, exposed yourself to sufficient natural light, and then done some hard work in the evening after the sun sets to minimize your exposure to artificial light and digital stimulation after dark. So when I say sleep your ass off, I'm talking about doing whatever it takes to get to bed so you have sufficient time to awaken naturally and with with minimal difficulty, right? I know I'm a little bit drag ass on certain mornings, but as soon as I launch into my morning routine that we'll be discussing as one of the one of the tips, uh, I start to feel that natural energizing uh, indicating that I obtain sufficient sleep. So sleep is number one awaken naturally. And if you're having trouble there or you feel like you're deficient, the key here, two things. One, minimize artificial light and digital stimulation after dark. And two, create an optimal sleeping environment. And that means dark. That means cool temperature. That means a kind of a sanctuary so that you can 
promote a restful parasympathetic state, not a stressful environment such as you might find if your bedroom is filled with clutter or you have a workspace in your bedroom. It's going to have an adverse psychological impact to be looking at your computer screen or your desk piled with bills and paperwork when you're trying to go to sleep. So at all possible, have the bedroom be dedicated to sleeping and make sure that you can get it really dark. And that includes uh, getting rid of the little uh, LED emanation from technology. So you can use black electrical tape to tape over those annoying uh, things that come out of uh, plugs or power strips. And certainly uh, getting your technology, your mobile device and other devices far away from your head so you can sleep without that EMF interference in a dark room. And as far as temperature, the temperature controlled mattresses have become so popular lately. I love my product from eight sleep, super high tech. And basically what they're doing you know, with this technology is they're trying to optimize the temperature of the mattress. You can set it for a certain temperature and making sure that it's nice and cool. So when you get into bed and try to go to sleep, you can't fall asleep unless you lower your body temperature by a couple degrees. This is from the research in Matthew Walker's popular book, Why We Sleep. And so knowing that falling asleep requires a drop in body temperature, we have to facilitate that with an appropriate environment. So that would be cool air temperature, cool mattress temperature, yet sufficiently warm skin temperature so that we don't <laughs> freeze and shake and, and shiver when we set our air conditioner uh, down to the 60s and we jump into a mattress that we've programmed to 58 or whatever. That's why people wear pajamas and get under the covers and under the blankets. So that's when the human feels best is when we're in a cool environment with warm skin. Now, the problem is uh, a lot of times you generate body heat under the covers, and then if you're waking up uh, midway through the night, there's a lot of great research that this is uh, driven by an elevation of body temperature, inappropriate elevation of body temperature. That's where the temperature-controlled mattress comes in. Uh, a less expensive hack than uh, investing in a new mattress. Although why wouldn't you invest in the absolute best mattress you can find when you spend a third of your life on the mattress? It's more important than your car, unless you're spending a third of your life in your car. If so, you have my permission to invest in the absolute best car you can uh, enjoy, right? But look, optimize your sleep environment, super important. And uh, an easier way to keep cool is to you know minimize your covering. So if you do get a little bit warm in the night, you can shed some of the layers of uh, a blanket and try to keep that body cool, but skin temperature warm. So sleep being number one, uh, my personal strategy, I have great importance on getting to bed at a consistent time. And if it gets past 10.30 p.m., ask me a more, my wife, she will tell you that I start to shut down. I start to mumble and slur my words. My eyelids start to droop and I'm basically non-functional. So um, it's been a great habit to cement over years and decades such that I have no business being up after that except for extremely rare occasions, right? When it's hyper stimulatory environment, I'm at a celebration, whatever, it's past my bedtime. We're watching a great movie later into the evening during vacation time, whatever it is. Of course, I'm going to stay awake easily with that stimulation coming in. But because I'm trying to create a calm, dark, mellow evening and wind down every night, I wind down on cue to the extent that I'm really sleepy and I have to fall asleep. So if you can't answer to that, if that's not familiar to you, we have to take a hard look at the stimulus, the stress that you face, especially after the sun sets in your environment. Because remember, our human nature is to wind things down. It's called dim light melatonin onset, DLMO. We are naturally calibrated to start releasing more and more of what they call the sleepy hormone melatonin into the bloodstream. And that causes uh, all those senses of drowsiness as well as the lowering of dopamine. That's one reason why the eyelids start to feel heavy. So all these hormonal processes are calibrated to help you get to sleep unless you interfere with them, slam 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 with an exciting, loud presentation on your wonderful home uh, entertainment uh, system. So that's my deal is I get to sleep consistently on time. I can't even help it, but it's a great habit. And then um, I, again, awaken naturally. And oftentimes that 
entails a big number. And boy, I wish I could be one of those people that could function optimally on less sleep, but I have to go with my genetics. And I also think it's very closely calibrated to the level of energy expenditure. So if I'm exercising uh, intently, as I have been for a long time, I need extra sleep. And then on days when I'm uh, falling off that, I find that I don't need as much sleep. But generally, I'm in bed at 1030 and I'm not awake until at least seven and sometimes closer to eight. So somewhere, let's say 730 would be the average. What does that add up to? <gasps> nine hours. Oh, my goodness. So I'm kind of in bed for nine hours and sleeping at least for uh, eight and a half. I'm not reading in bed or anything. That's kind of a lights out until get out of bed uh, number countdown. Uh, as we close this discussion on sleep, and this is going to be part one of uh, natural testosterone optimization, I do have to put in a plug for a different kind of rest. So we all know how important the block of evening overnight sleep is, but we also are incredibly obligated today, like no other time in human history, to find ways to achieve downtime from what has now become a hyper-stimulatory, hyper-connected daily experience. And so we have the p potential to be constantly entertained and engaged with the mobile device at all times from the moment we wake up. And I mean the moment we wake up because 84% of Americans reach for their phone as their first act upon awakening. Two thirds of that number are still in bed when they reach for their phone, unfortunately. So that is a huge cultural trend that as soon as we open our eyes, we are engaged with technology. And you know how we have that downtime during the day that's no longer there. And boy, sometimes I really appreciate when I'm standing in line somewhere and instead of wasting time, I get to use my phone and be productive even. So, uh, you know, that, that's, that's great. But when we look at the big picture and we realize that we no longer have that downtime that was inherent to human life for entire history until recently, that's when we need to have great discipline to put the device aside, go outside, sit in a chair and stare into space for five minutes in the office courtyard. I love to go and take a, a hot tub in the middle of the day just to disengage my brain, especially on a cold day. It feels so great and refreshing and restorative because I'm away from the screen for those precious 15 minutes. And then I'm back and feel alert and energized. Same thing for a nap. You can't beat that for a very efficient restoration of the electrical circuitry and the sodium potassium pumps that that help brain neurons function. So you know that expression, I feel fried this afternoon. It is literally true because when you deplete the circuitry of your brain function, you are frying the neurons. And when you replenish after a short nap, because that's what's going on when you close your eyes, even if you can't fall asleep, you're not great at napping. If you just go somewhere dark and close your eyes and relax and do breathing, listen to a, a meditation uh, app or whatever, relax, you are helping to regenerate those brain neurons very quickly to the extent that you are literally refreshed after feeling literally fried. So we have this critical obligation for rest, recovery, downtime, recovery for those exercise folks when we're pushing and enjoying our fitness lifestyle. We also need recovery days and recovery periods. So we pair that with sleep and we cover that big picture for the starting point for all manner of health and fitness optimization is to get sufficient sleep and rest. Thanks for listening and more to come on this topic of natural testosterone optimization.